Is it possible to build your own battery pack? And if so, is it even cost effective? Earlier this year, I built this DIY one wheel. And one of the things that surprised me the most while building it was the cost of the battery pack. Now granted, the battery pack that I bought is a 20 amp hour battery and at 48 volts, that's almost one kilowatt hour of capacity. It also came with the charger, but still this thing cost about $340, which is about half the price of the overall cost of the project. Hi everyone, my name is Zach, and here on Bite Size Engineering, I make ridiculous engineering projects designed to inspire you to unleash your inner maker. Today I'm gonna to be making my own lithium battery pack. I feel like I need to give a disclaimer. Building your own LiPo battery pack can be very dangerous if you're not sure what you're doing. Do not attempt this project unless you have a solid understanding of electronics and that you feel comfortable taking on such a project. With that out of the way, let's get started. For building a battery pack, you're obviously going to need some battery cells. So for this build, I'm going to be using a very common lithium battery cell called the 18650. It's called the 18650 because of the dimensions of the battery. It's 18 millimeters in diameter and 65 millimeters long. These batteries are found everywhere from laptop batteries to drill batteries and even in Tesla electric vehicles. Each battery cell has a voltage of 3.7 volts nominal and a capacity of 2,500 milliamp hours. I wanna make my battery pack 48 volts, so how do I get from 3.7 up to 48? Well, I need to connect 13 of these batteries in series. Now, just like any other AA or AAA battery, these have a negative terminal and a positive terminal. They're a lot harder to see because these don't have the button on top like a AA or a AAA, but they are marked here on the outside. And so it's really important to keep those straight as you're connecting up. Because if you do this wrong, again, it will result in a short and an explosion and a fire. And we want to avoid that at all costs. The first problem we kind of need to overcome is how to hold all of these cells and orient them in the right way. Luckily to help with that, they make these little battery clips that are designed to hold 18650 battery cells. And they're actually modular, so you can snap more of them together and kind of custom build the size and shape of your battery. I'm gonna start by making a grid of 13 by four. Because I have these cells alternating, I can connect them in series pretty simply by just bridging this gap here, then it'll go down, bridge the gap underneath, then come up, bridge the gap on top, and so on. And that will allow me to put all 13 of these in series. To make a good solid electrical connection, I'm going to be spot welding some nickel strips across these battery cells. You might be asking yourself why I made a grid of four by 13 if I'm only gonna be using 13 cells. Well, if I just use the 13 cells, that would give me 48 volts, but my battery capacity would only be 2.5 amp hours. I wanna make a battery pack with more capacity than that. So I'm gonna make three more sets of 13 cells and I'm gonna connect all of those in parallel to give me a total capacity of 10 amp hours. That is about half the capacity of the battery that's in my one wheel. You can order this nickel strip material just in individual strips like this, but because I'm gonna be doing a lot of these cells in series, I went ahead and I bought this type of nickel strip, which makes that job a lot easier. I'm gonna make a whole bunch of pieces out of this material and cut them to the right length. Once I'm done with that, it'll be time to start spot welding these pieces onto the battery pack. For that, I'm gonna use this cheap battery spot welder that I found on Amazon. To be honest, this was pretty cheap compared to the other professional options, and so I was pretty skeptical, but I've tested it out and it seems to work just fine. If you were gonna do a, this professionally, I would obviously get something that's professional quality, but if you're just gonna be making these for fun, this is a good option to go for. Now that I've got the batteries assembled in the plastic clips, it's time to start spot welding those nickel strips in place. Like I said earlier, there are 13 cells in series and then there are gonna be four of those in parallel. So this is a 13S 4P battery. Before I spot weld all of these battery cells together, let me tell you about Altium, who is a sponsor of this video. Altium makes a PCB design software called Altium Designer. If you've ever done any sort of electrical design, you're gonna to wanna to check out Altium Designer. In my career as an electrical engineer, I've used a lot of different software, and let's be honest, most of it is crap. 
That is not the case with Altium Designer. It is beautifully designed, it's modern, and they're continually updating it to have the latest features. What's cool about Altium Designer is that it's an all-in-one platform. Some of the other software that I've used, you have to use different programs to do your schematic capture, and then your board layout, and then your component selection, and your netlist, and it's a huge mess. That's not the case with Altium Designer. It's all built into one package. Another cool thing about Altium is that it has cloud features. It's got something called Altium 365, which is a cloud workspace that allows you to collaborate with other people and do version control. If you want to get a better idea of what you can make with Altium Designer, go follow them on Instagram, and there's lots of different examples of what people have made using their software. If you're ready to take your PCB design to the next level, Go check out Altium Designer and you can do that by clicking on the link in the description and when you sign up for a subscription you'll get a 30% discount. Altium is an awesome company. They believe in what I do here on this channel and they make these videos possible so go check them out. I really appreciate you supporting the sponsors and I appreciate Altium for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna leave this last little tab unwelded for now and I'll come back later and finish it off. That's because I'm gonna be using a battery management system and I need to solder balance leads to each one of these terminals. And I don't want a lot of that heat from the soldering iron to go into these lithium iron batteries because that would be really bad. So I'm gonna leave this last one loose and I'm gonna come in and solder that balance lead on there and then tack it into place. That way I avoid getting too much heat on those batteries. At this point, I have all of the nickel strips spot welded to the battery pack, and I've checked the voltages at each node, and I get the voltages that I'm expecting. Right now, I could connect wires to the positive and negative ends of the battery and use it, but in order to charge this effectively, I wanna add what's called a battery management system. A battery management system like this will add a lot of safety features like over discharge and over voltage protection, as well as making sure that when you charge the batteries, all of the cells get balanced properly. Oh, crap. That's the wrong thing.
Can I be honest with you? It's getting to the point where my heartbeat is starting to pick up a little bit. I'm like hyper cautious about where everything is and where all of the terminals are and making sure that nothing shorts out. Cause I'm gonna be honest, if there's like a, a piece of wire or something on my workbench and it shorts it out, that's not gonna be good. That's gonna be um, pretty scary. So forgive me if I start to slow down and take my time with this because I really don't want um, a fire in here. Now that I've got the balance lead soldered onto the battery pack, it's time to install the BMS board itself. But before I do that, I need to solder on a couple of wires to this board. First, I'm gonna solder a big 10 gauge wire to the discharge port on this BMS system. This is the connector that I'm gonna to use to actually power the load in whatever project that I use this in, so I want it to be a big gauge wire. The second wire that I need to solder onto this BMS board is the charging cable. The charging wire doesn't need to be as big of a gauge as the discharge one because the current is much lower when you charge the battery. And finally, I'm going to solder the negative terminal of the battery to this board, completing everything. Once I do that, I'm gonna add this XT60 connector for the discharge cable and a Dean's connector for the charging cable. This is just the standard that I've kind of come up with. It's the one that I used on my one wheel, so I'm gonna to continue to do that. For this battery, I wanna be able to put some sort of insulating layer around each of the lithium cells. So I went to the store and I found this little piece of craft foam, but this was kind of expensive. It's only a single sheet and it was like three or four dollars and it's not very thick. So I actually went to the hardware store and kind of started looking around the aisles and I came across this. This is sort of a thicker rubber and it's used to line the inside of cabinets. And it was like 18 inches by four feet and it was like eight dollars for this giant roll. So this is what I'm gonna to use to wrap around the battery to keep it protected and also keep an insulating layer around it. So at this point, the battery's pretty much done. It's ready to go. I like how it turned out. I love the little blue shrink wrap on the outside. It makes it look very professional. Um, the last thing to do is to test this thing out on my one wheel to see if it works. I'm gonna go ahead and swap out the old battery and put in this new one, see if it works. I gotta turn on the power button here. I'm looking at my voltage meter here and it's reading at 35%, which means that these cells are not fully charged, which makes sense because that wouldn't be safe to sell them and ship them in the fully charged state. So I'm not really worried about that. So this is ready to go. I think if I press down on the foot pad and then lean forward, it should start going. Yep, there it goes. Cool, it works. Knowing that this battery works is awesome because it means I can use this in future projects. It also gives me the confidence to build more of these as I need them in the future. 
So the last thing I need to talk about is the cost of this. Was it cheaper to build my own? Now obviously I built a battery that's only half the size of the one that I bought for the one wheel, but I ran the numbers and I created a bill of materials. And if I was to build one with the same specs as the one that I bought, it would cost about $270 as opposed to $340. That's like a 20% savings. If you're only ever gonna need one of these batteries, it's probably better off just to buy one. But if you're gonna be building projects that require lots of different batteries, it's probably wise to invest in the tools and the materials to build your own. I hope this video was interesting and inspired you to unleash your inner maker. If you want to see more videos like this, I've got several here that I think you should check out. And if you're new to Bite Size, be sure to subscribe, and that way you can keep up to date with the things that I'm working on. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you next time.